Okay, I'm going to briefly, or as quickly as possible, go through the 2020 advice for healthcare workers on influenza. So we'll talk about COVID-19 separately, but really the, the, the two things we need to minimise influenza risk is good hand hygiene, which is the same for COVID-19, and um, uh, uptake of the immunisation. We don't have a COVID immunisation or vaccine, we do for flu, so we want everyone to, to use it. This is general advice. Uh, if you want specific advice to you, you need to go to your GP or health professional. So flu is a contagious illness of the airways and caused by infection with influenza viruses. Spread by aerosols, so in the air from sneezing, coughing or even talking and touching infected surfaces. It's a strong virus and it can live in the air for a couple of hours and on hard surfaces for up to 24 hours. So if you sneeze unprotected onto a desk, uh, a book, um, a, a phone, then the next person touching that, that surface within 24 hours may well pass on the virus. It's a severe virus and is much worse than the cold. Do not associate flu with the cold, it's a different thing. And also there is no man flu, I'm sorry to tell you. Um, okay, so spread by aerosol infection, this is why we have etiquette. Please cough into your bended elbow or into a tissue and discard the tissue and wash your hands straight afterwards. Symptoms are similar to a cold, but usually more severe. So fever, headache, fatigue, aches and pains, tiredness and weakness, chest discomfort, runny or stuff, stuffy nose, sneezing and sore throat. If you have any of those, do not come to work, ring up for advice and go to your GP. Or, or preferably ring your GP rather than rocking up at your GP and, and potentially infecting their surgery also. People with flu can be infectious to others before symptoms even start. A couple of days before, you may feel generally a little bit uh, fatigued, but not realise, and you, you may have flu. And usually flu uh, will be contagious for about a week afterwards. Children are super spreaders and they hold on to it for longer. Uh, so be very diligent with hygiene at home uh, and around your, your kids, and especially if you have older people in the home as well. Vaccination helps protect individuals over the age of six months old from spreading the flu to other people. Now, we, we haven't had a, last year was not a normal season, but in normal so-called flu seasons in South Australia, uh, the peak is around uh, August, September time. And the best time to have your vaccination is late April, early May. Last year, flu killed two and a half thousand to three and a half thousand, or on a normal year, two and a half thousand to three and a half thousand Australians die from flu, which is a lot more than most people would think. It is not just a cold, it is not to be downplayed, it is equally of um, a concern to COVID-19 and probably more relevant and real um, than COVID-19 at the moment, not to dispel that at all, um, but at this moment flu should be taken extremely seriously. 18,000 hospitalizations on average each year, 350,000 GP visits. And that's the tip of an iceberg because most people don't end up in hospital or even go to their GP. Most people aren't tested for flu. So the numbers are actually a lot higher than that. The National Immunization Program provides free vaccinations to, to a, a large group of people. We aren't covered by the NIP, but Ananda provides free vaccines to all residents or staff. Okay. So our role in preventing flu outbreaks and COVID outbreaks is um, obviously not to come to work if we have any symptoms, to uh, always practice strict hand hygiene as per our protocols. But with flu, the additional thing to do is to get the vaccine in April, May. Additional immunisation of healthcare workers helps prevent infection and minimises exposure of our vulnerable residents. Um, we aim, the aim is to have 95% of our staff vaccinated each year. We have not achieved that because staff have unacceptably and inappropriately not vaccinated. There are a small number of staff who cannot vaccinate. It is a very small number. It is not 40% of the staff. We expect staff to take their duty of care seriously 
and to take sensible evidence-based advice, not social media advice. Resident focused care means above all do no harm. If you do not have the vaccination, if you come into work uh, not vaccinated, if you come into work with symptoms, or if you come into work and don't practice good hand hygiene, you are doing harm potentially to our residents and other staff. So again, everyone should have the flu vaccine. Flu is here all the time, but we do have seasons uh, in, in, in so-called normal years. And in South Australia, as I said before, the peak is September, and we are usually going to make the, the vaccine available late April, early May. 2017 and 2019 were very bad years, and most deaths, deaths are in people over 75 years of age. Flu at the moment is far more likely to kill our residents than COVID-19. That could change, and we are very vigilant about COVID-19, of course, but flu is, is to be taken extremely seriously. So what do flu people with flu look like? They could like like that. They certainly do look like that. Um, and, and, you know, if you have uh, you know, comorbidities or, or, or a weak immune system, you could end up in ICU. And worst case scenario, as I said before, two and a half to three and a half thousand people a year die from flu. I'll go through the types of flu just for interest. There are, there are basically three flu viruses, A, B and C, but C doesn't affect humans. Uh, influenza A is divided into subtypes uh, based on um, the proteins that bind to the, the virus surface, so which are called hemagglutinin and neuraminidase. And not important, but when you hear the terms H1N1, H3N2, that's, that's where that comes from, the hemagglutinin and the neuraminidase. Hemagglutinin is just sort of helps the virus target cells, and neuraminidase, when it's inside the cells, helps it proliferate or, or grow. Influenza B viruses are divided into two what they call lineages, which are Victoria and Yamagata, and that's just named after the places where they were first isolated. Uh, in the past, we've had two types of virus, uh, a, a vaccine, a trivalent and a quadrivalent vaccine. Um, don't worry about that because this year there is only a quadrivalent vaccine. Quadrivalent means four uh, or protection against four things. So quadrivalent vaccines this year protect against two uh, A strains and the two uh, B, B strain lineages, so all the four common strains of flu. However, it's difficult to predict which types of flu viruses are going to be prevalent uh, and around each season. Uh, and the World Health Organization works out um, each year what the most likely strains are going to be, but you know, it's not precise, it's not possible to know for sure. Um, but the vaccine is the best possible protection. Uh, there, you can have the flu vaccine and still get flu because you get a different strain uh, to what is protected. But if you don't have the vaccine, you're not protected at all. So I've covered that. So there are people, very few people should not have the flu vaccine. So let's start with the big myth. Uh, you cannot catch flu from the flu vaccine. It is physically impossible. And anyone who says they have caught flu from the flu vaccine should be, um, their opinion should be disregarded. If they're a nurse saying this, I would question their ability to practice as a nurse because it is impossible to catch flu from the flu vaccine. Yes, as I said, you do get some mild symptoms. You may have flu, you may have caught flu before you have the flu vaccine. That is possible, but you cannot get flu from the flu vaccine. It should be used in caution with people with bleeding disorders. Uh, that's going to be relatively few people, or if you're on anticoagulant therapy, go to your GP and get some advice on that. You, you, you will bleed a bit longer than normal because um, of the injection which has nothing to do with the vaccine. It, it's the same with any injection. People with a history of Guillain-Barre syndrome will know they've had Guillain-Barre syndrome. Um, it's very rare. We could have uh, staff who have had Guillain-Barre syndrome, 
but you will know if you've had it and you will go and ask for advice from a healthcare professional, not have it um, at an ender. In pregnancy, we've had no trials. There have been no trials on giving uh, pregnant women vaccines. It's unethical. Um, but the advice is that what's good for the baby, uh, what's good for the mum is good for the baby. And because babies can't have the flu vaccine until they're six months old, they are protected to some extent by the mum having the vaccine at any trimester. So it doesn't matter uh, at what stage you're pregnant, you can still have the vaccine and should. Egg allergy. Okay, here's another big one. It's very unlikely, uh, unless you've had an anaphylactic reaction, so a very severe reaction to a vaccine or to eggs in the past, uh, it's very unlikely that you'll have any problems whatsoever with having the flu vaccine. It's a, not a contraindication, absolutely. But if you've had an anaphylactic reaction, I would go to your GP. I would certainly not have the vaccine at an ender. If you say you have an egg, egg allergy, that means you've had a documented allergy to eggs, not that you just don't like them or they make you throw up. I need to check um, the information, but I know that in America, the vaccine this year is not incubated on hen's eggs. Therefore, there is no chance of people with egg allergy or, or, or absolutely minimal chance of people with egg allergy getting a reaction from the vaccine. I just need to check with our vaccine this, this year if that's the case. But the, the likelihood is that having an egg allergy should not prevent you from having the vaccine. Please go to your GP and they can advise you. So that's it. So what we're saying is we expect all staff to have the flu vaccine. If you don't want to, that's fine. We need you to tell us why. And if there's the rational reason, then um, we, I think it's reasonable for you to go to your GP and um, provide evidence uh, of that. Now, just quickly, the, the, the strains that are protected against for this year have changed. So the two A strains that are protected against are H1N1, uh, which are, is a Brisbane-like virus. H3N2 is based on last year's South Australian-like virus. And the B strains are, or lineages are the Washington-like and the Phuket-like uh, lineages, which is of no, no real concern, but if you want to know what's in the vaccine, that's what they're protecting against. So finally, take home messages. Influenza is highly contagious, causes hospitalization and does cause deaths every year, particularly in vulnerable groups like children, like residential aged care residents. We don't know what the flu year is going to be like. Um, we don't know how COVID is going to interact with that but we need our staff to be protected against flu. We need our staff to be protected against flu to protect our residents, protect the staff, and to ensure that we have sufficient staff at work to care for our residents. The flu vaccine is the best, the only protection you have, so have it. It is very safe, there are very few and very minor side effects. But those who think that they are likely to have side effects should go to their GP and get advice and get a certificate from them and not have the vaccine. But we need to know. We will stand down people who don't have the vaccine in the case that we have um, an outbreak at one of the homes. That's only reasonable. An ANDRA has a duty of care to staff and residents. A maximal uptake of flu vaccine is the only way you can wish, we can ensure our residents are safe, our staff are safe, and your families are safe. So if you have any concerns, speak to your GP. If you want further information, speak to me or speak to Karen Daniels Goddard, Director of Nursing. Please do not listen to social media. Please only trust reliable sources of health information and your GP is the first port of call in that sense. Thank you for being resident focused and thank you for getting your flu vaccine this year. We aim to get 95% of our staff vaccinated at both sites.